Hi, thanks for tuning in to Tech View. This video is all about my Starlink setup. Just a little tip guys, if you're interested in getting Starlink and you're not sure whether it's right for you or whether you are too obstructed with your view, then you can download the app and you can do what we're about to show you before you even order Starlink so you can make sure it's right for you. And don't forget, if you want to see some speed tests, stick around until the end and I'll put some samples up there. So one of the first things you have to decide is where you're actually going to put your Starlink dish or dishy flat face as he's called. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of trees here um, and there's buildings all around. So trying to find the ideal place can be a bit tricky. That's when the Starlink app comes in. You go to visibility and this shows you what the dish can see. You have to check for obstructions. So on the app, it will show here and look up. So you look up to the sky and it will show you where the satellites are going to be received. What you have to do is try and fill in. It's quite difficult to do. And then you can view your results. So it takes just a few seconds for the app to update. Uh, with the results and as you can see you've got a clear pass here it's a great place to put the starlink and just in case you're wondering what it would look like if you put your dish in a place that wasn't the best position then this is what it would look like clearly you can see the building is obstructing the signal let's have a look at the results I'm not expecting it to be a great position. Yep, you may want to find a better spot. You can actually see where it's actually blocked. And according to the app, this would give you an outage every 40 seconds, which would be annoying. Once you've found the perfect position, you simply plug in the dish and it takes a few seconds to initialize. Then roughly four to five minutes later, it acquires the satellites. From here on, you should be good to go. So this is my setup here. We have it coming in through a hole in the wall and it comes with 30 meters of this uh, extremely thick, high quality uh, ethernet cable. That connects into this power brick, which is extremely warm. That's why uh, we put it on top of this uh, heatproof mat here, just to, just in case. I'm sure it's absolutely fine, but you could cook an egg on that. Um, then we get this nice uh, Ethernet cable, which is PoE to the actual Starlink router. The Starlink router is okay, does its job. It's just a standard router. It's not very stable on the table at all. It has fallen over a few times and it, uh, it does give off a slight hum every now and then as well. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind on where you're going to place it. So the actual modem itself is in the dish. So there's no modem in here. So you can technically plug this into whatever router you want to. Now we don't actually use this router, uh, not for any other particular reason other than we've got our own router, which is an all singing, all dancing router. So yeah, we don't actually use this, but we thought we'd put it together and show you what comes in the kit. There is one auxiliary ethernet port on the back of the router. So you can plug some external devices into this, but just remember that you can't actually switch off the Wi-Fi on this router. All this really means is that you can't bridge from the router itself to another router, but that's not necessarily uh, an issue because the modem is straight into the uh, the dish itself. So you can just plug your new router straight into the dish. So this is the Starlink app. This is the free app that you can use to control some settings on your router and mostly see the statistics of your upload and download speed and things like that. The configuration settings for the router itself are very basic. Um, they've just updated it so that you can split out now the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. So that's a little bit better. You can see connected devices to the router. And this is also the app that we used for the visibility check earlier on. There's some basic help settings on there as well. 
But the best thing for me, and you can use this with or without the Starling Recruiter, is the network statistics. This basically tells you the network statistics on the dish itself. So how long it's been up, if there's been any outages. As well as the latency and your current upload and download speeds. So that's really all there is to it. It's super easy to get up and started with Starlink and it really is a great service. Check out these speed tests and please, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.